Hello, my name is Kirsty. I'm a second year medical student at Warwick Medical School. I'm going to talk to you about two things today. One is joining the medical school as a non-scientist. I studied photography for my undergrad degree. And I'm also going to talk to you a bit about being a parent on this course. As a medical photographer, I got to meet so many patients. Um, at my last count, when I left my, my job as a medical photographer, I had over, I think, 3,000 separate patients in two years. So um, I got to see a lot. Um, and it definitely exposed me to all the different types of medical careers there are out there. Um, I got to deal with um, a lot of dermatology patients, um, people from the tissue viability service, things like pressure sores, um, moisture lesions. Um, I saw a lot of plastics patients, people pre and post-operatively. Sometimes I'd get called to theatre and I, I really vividly remember being asked to photograph a thyroid and I asked the surgeon if he could just pop his scalpel next to the bit that he most wanted in focus because I had no idea what thing in the neck was the thyroid. Um, it all looked the same to me. So some questions that have been sent in include things like, have I found it hard transitioning from an arts background to medicine? And in a word, <laughs> yes. Not necessarily because the, the concepts are hard, um, it's more to do with the, the sort of bare volume <laughs> of uh, things we're supposed to know. Some people have asked what's more important, uh, having a good academic background or having the drive. Um, both would be great, uh, that would really help, but I don't think you have to be um, from a straight A's background, I know I wasn't, um, and nor can I say I'm the most driven person on the course. I really want to be a doctor, so I have that going for me, I hope. <laughs> um, but I have had to sort of split my time between lots of things, parenting, the course, um, keeping in touch with family when they wonder why they haven't heard from me for weeks on end. Um, and I think you do have to try to find compromises in some areas, but it is possible to have a decent social life, to do well, um, to have a family. Uh, so hopefully that's reassuring. Um, another thing that uh, some people have asked about in regards to being a parent on the course is how do you find the time, is it possible um, financially also people are worried about the implications of coming here with children. So the main things you'll need are dedication to the course, um, there will be times that you wish you hadn't done it perhaps and find it all quite hard. Um, but if you can stick with it and you can set aside the time to, to revise and to keep going over things, um, it shouldn't matter what background you come from. Um, medicine's a bit of a leveller in that respect. So Warwick has quite a broad age range of students. Um, some people have gone straight from A-level through undergrad and then straight on to the course. I have done a couple of degrees. Um, I started off doing foundation art and design after my A-levels, um, which were patchy. Um, and from foundation art and design, I went to study graphic communication, which didn't suit me. And I don't think that was the right point in life for me to go to university. Um, so I withdrew from that uh, before completing my first year. And then I started working as a makeup artist. I did administration for various companies. And then one day I got the bright idea that I needed to work in healthcare. Um, this was shortly after the birth of my daughter. Uh, and I must have been aged about 24 at that point. Um, so I merrily went off, applied to midwifery, and I got rejected. Uh, I hadn't really read the application properly, and you're supposed to have study within three years for the course I applied to, which I didn't have. And um, from there, I started researching more about what I could study with my background. I had been working as a makeup artist and a photographer uh, for some years by that point. Um, and I was trying to work out what kind of healthcare degree would let me study with the background I had. And one really kind midwife pointed out that medical photography was a thing. Um, wasn't something I'd heard of before. And after talking to uh, Westminster Uni, um, I found myself signed up <laughs> to go start university um, a few weeks later after having already enrolled myself on an access to healthcare course. 
I then phoned the Access to Health Care course and they were super excited that even just signing up <laughs> to their course would get you into a degree uh, without even having to go to a single lecture. That was quite useful. Um, so three years working um, as a student medical photographer exposed me to a side of healthcare that I didn't, hadn't really considered for myself before. Uh, for the first time I saw what doctors actually did um, and I started to find that I wanted to do that. I loved being a medical photographer. I worked professionally after my degree for two years um, at a great district general hospital that gave me all kinds of experience dealing um, directly with my own patients. I've been asked by a few people how to juggle studying with being a parent um, and I would just say to them treat it like a job. Uh, plenty of parents work full time. Um, they might work night shifts, they might be away from their families quite a lot, but ultimately you're doing it for a reason and um, I think it's a good reason. You'll, you'll find a way to balance things even if it means a lot of compromise, but as long as you're mindful of the people that really matter, then it should be okay. What has the financial situation been like for you? So finances have been tricky at times. Um, I came here from uh, professional background. I was working as a medical photographer and uh, as you might know by this point you have to find the first three and a half thousand pounds to fund this course. So that actually took me some time and having to reapply three times helped me get the savings together in order to do that. Once you're here though you do get student loans and if you're a parent you do get extra money added on to your bursary. So if you're worried about that um, think of it like child tax credits. If you're working on a low income you would get support with childcare fees and it's the same on this degree. So um, I only have to find about 15% of the total fees for my daughters before and after school care. I found um, before and after school clubs completely invaluable for helping me study as a parent. Um, my daughter's actually here watching <laughs> at the moment um, and hopefully she would agree that it's, uh, it's it's quite good fun at um, school clubs, so they, if, depending on the school you choose around here, there is the option to have uh, clubs from 7.30 in the morning to 5.30 at night and um, that's quite similar to many children have whose parents aren't students but do actually work full time. It's no different to a job in that respect. I don't feel like my daughter's missed out on family time. Um, in any way that she wouldn't have if I was working, if that makes sense. Uh, so Ollie's asked me to tell you about how uh, my interaction with patients might be affected by my background and whether or not that's changed over the course of this degree. So I think coming into hospital I might have been a bit more confident than perhaps people who've never had um, clients or patients or um, people of their own that they're expected to look after, be that as a healthcare assistant, um, it could be anything, working in hospitality, working as a makeup artist, um, just having that uh, sort of comfortable, relaxed nature with people. Um, it's, it's easier if you've done it before. They will teach you on the course and over time you will get more and more comfortable. Um, especially with some of the things that we want to talk to, um, talk with our patients about uh, things like um, that drugs, alcohol, smoking, um, trying to discuss those things without seeming judgmental can be quite hard and I think that I found that just as hard as other people um, because sometimes it does feel like as a student you're delving into people's private lives and it's, it's for you to learn. Um, and that, that can feel a bit uncomfortable because I knew that when I was a photographer I was taking the pictures for their medical record and while sometimes I did learn on the job um, I always knew that it was directly benefiting the patient um, and sometimes it can be hard to see that as a student but ultimately we need to learn so we can help the next person that's sick once we've qualified. Um, and I do think first year will always be difficult in that respect but you do get used to asking people um, so how much do you smoke and um, have you ever thought about stopping um, and eventually it will become quite natural and I think that Warwick's really good for getting you in at the deep end. You start in first year and um, for some medical schools that point doesn't happen until two three years down the line so this way you're always aware of what the end goal is and I think being 
good and building a, a, a strong rapport with your patients is really important and it will help you be a better doctor. Coming from a non-science background has been challenging I think at times. Some people do, do have that pre-existing biomedical knowledge um, that really helps in first year exams. I think it becomes less important the further on you go uh, because you're starting to look for patterns and it's more about clinical presentations rather than blank recall of facts. Um, obviously they do have to be there to help you justify your answers um, but you, you'll build like a, a broader picture. Um, so for me, I thought that I would get all the books on science before I came. Um, one in particular was recommended, the Catch-Up Compendium. I have it, it's in my bookshelf, and I wish I'd read it because there were quite a few things in that that came up in our first year exams and I'm pretty sure I got them wrong. Um, other than that, Mostly I've just been talking my way through problems. Um, I like to talk to people that understand things a bit better than me. I think you'll have seen some interviews from my favourite source of knowledge, which is paramedic Will. Uh, he's, he's very good <laughs> at all things medicine. Um, and I found that he can explain things in a way that I understand. So I wouldn't underestimate your peers. Um, if you're, you're struggling with something, ask for help. Uh, I personally love collecting books, I'm less good at reading them all. Um, so I think find what works for you, try a few different things in first year and hopefully by the time you get through to second year you've got a system in place and I think by the time you get to second year the background you have makes no difference at all. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's been a pattern that the scientists do better um, in any particular exam. So don't let the fact that you're a musician or historian or you've done English put you off from applying because I think by the end of first year we're all on a level playing field. Have I ever felt out of my depth? Yes, <laughs> frequently. Um, not just as a medical student, as a parent <laughs> um, all the time. Um, there, there will be things that you find hard. I don't, I don't know anyone personally that's got through one, two, three years of medical school without hitting something that's made them stop and question whether or not they can do this. Um, I think it's important to admit when you're struggling and speak to someone that can maybe point you in the direction of help or help you themselves. Um, for me, I felt quite guilty about the time that I've spent away from my daughter or the fact that um, sometimes I'm quite stressed and um, I find it harder to deal with things like mess or noise and I want everything to be tidy and quiet and neat so I can study. But uh, ultimately they're all things that I can put up with <laughs> and maybe solve. Um, so I've spoken to other parents about how they do it. There, there are people on this course that have quite a few children um, and they're still going, they can do it. Um, I've, I found one was hard as a a working person and um, there's no reason why it would be different as a student and if anything we get more time off than someone that's employed so uh, in first year you get a really long summer and I would recommend spending most of that summer with your kids if you come here as a parent um, and also even if you don't have children just make that summer all about you and your family and your friends uh, because actually it's a really good opportunity that you don't get in the middle of working life uh, to go, go take two months off and, and look after yourself. As I said earlier, I'm 31 um, and Ollie's asked me what I would do if I could go back and advise 16 or 17 year old Kirsty. Oh, so many things. Um, I would want to work harder at school um, just because Coming into medical school, you need to have a good work ethic if you want to get good grades. I've passed my exams, but I, I do feel like I could have done better. And I think part of that would be having like a, a really strong focus um, would, have, would have been the thing that made me better. Um, so 16-year-old me wasn't focused at all. I was quite excited to go off and be an artist. Um, and then I... D I I don't really regret the path I've taken to get here. Uh, I'm glad that I've tried lots of different things. I loved being a photographer. I love doing people's makeup. I still do both of those things now. And in fact, maybe I, I enjoy them more now that they're a hobby rather than 
um, something I have to do. But um, I don't I don't think I would change my pathway. I don't feel like I'm too old to be back at university. But I, I do think that um, I have a shoddy work ethic at times and I shouldn't. How have you found the progression from first year into second year? I'm so relieved to be in second year. I don't think I could have done first year again. I found it really hard. I hadn't ever had to rote learn anything. Um, photography as a degree isn't that mentally taxing. I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, so coming to study medicine was a bit of a, a shock to the system. So I used to work um, and I would liken second year to being quite like working. Um, if you say that you're going to be working Monday to Friday, nine to five, um, and apply that to your studies, um, you, it's the same really. Um, whereas first year was a lot of book learning, classroom learning, um, and it, it didn't feel that fun at times. Uh, second year feels much more natural. Really enjoy it. What strategies do you have for coping when things feel like a bit too much? So I have had moments on the course where I found it difficult and I've questioned whether or not I should be doing the course. Luckily, I stuck at it, but that wasn't really alone. I spoke to people on the course, my, my classmates, my friends, I spoke to people that work in the support team here at the medical school. They've also signposted me to people on campus that I can talk to um, should I feel like things have got too much. Um, I also think um, looking out for your, your physical, your mental health is really important too. So I've been to see my GP when I've struggled. Um, there are mental health practitioners here on campus and I found them completely invaluable um, without the massive amount of support here, I, I think I would have struggled a lot more. Um, you just have to go looking for it. Uh, they do make themselves known, but I know that it's really hard to admit when you've got a problem, um, especially if it's the first time that you've experienced anything like this. Uh, but I don't think there's any shame in putting your hand up and saying this is really hard, and can you give me any advice, can I talk to someone, that kind of thing. Um, at the moment, things are going well, but I know that if I do have problems, there are people I can go to, uh, whatever the problem may be, be it um, your clinical personal tutor, the uh, well-being and professionalism support group. I can't quite remember the acronym <laughs> that we're using now. It changes, um, but we, we've got a dedicated team. That's what I'm trying to say. Have you had any thoughts about specialty? So a lot of people recommend things like GP if you want a good work-life balance. Um, I am considering it, um, but there is still part of me that quite likes looking inside people and, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to wind Ollie up. I don't, uh, to be honest, I don't know <laughs> what specialty I want to go into. Um, I'm really interested in the hospital specialisms, but I do like the idea of having a life outside of work too. Hopefully there'll be a happy medium somewhere. Um, so my favourite part of the Warwick course would be the people I've met. I love medicine, it's really interesting, but I feel at home here in a way that I haven't really felt anywhere else. Um, made really good friends, um, I've had a lot of fun, uh, awful things have happened all around us, but ultimately we're, we're still quite close and we're still keeping going. Um, and I don't know if you get that in other careers, but medicine's a bit of a pressure cooker for absolutely everything. Um, and I'm so glad I've chosen it as my career path. So I thought the best person um, maybe to reassure people about the idea of studying with children would be to hear from the horse's mouth what it's like to be the child of a medical student, uh, <laughs> depending on whether or not she cooperates. Um, so Rowan, what's been the worst thing about mummy being at medical school? Um, she doesn't get to spend m much time with me. Okay, so you do have to split your day up and unfortunately it's not the same as being um, a stay-at-home parent. You do have to set aside time for studying and uh, time, time for your family. What's the best thing? That you will help people. You, when I get sick you'll be able to help me. That's the goal. Um, how do you feel when you come into university? Um, I feel very happy because you're learning about how to be a doctor. Okay. Um, Warwick's quite 
family friendly. We have a number of societies here on campus um, that don't mind Rowan coming along to join in. Uh, things like uh, board game society, wilderness medicine um, stand out particularly. Do you remember going to Wales? Yeah. Can you tell people what we did there? So we went to the beach and we were doing this fake thing but I didn't really want to do it. Oh, <laughs> Rowan got to pretend to be uh, drowned and rescued by uh, <laughs> some very enthusiastic wilderness members. What sort of doctor do you think I should be? Um, I don't know. I don't know. The doctor that you want to be. That's, that's great. Good answer. What do you want to do when you grow up? Um, when I was three I wanted to be an elephant, but that doesn't matter. Um, but I really want to be a teacher because I've been doing quizzes for my homework and my teacher says I've been teaching her some things as well. And who do you think was better at a knee examination, you or the first years? Me. Probably <laughs> Maybe. So what's it been like settling into new schools because mummy's made us all move? Um, when I go to the different school I get very shy but as I settle in it's really fun. Who do you think works harder? Year two at primary school or year two at medical school? Year two at medical school. Why do you say that? Because they're learning to be doctors. Okay. Yeah, she's right. What do you think I'd do in the hospital? Watch people who are sick and the nurses look after them. Correct. We watch people who are sick and the nurses look after them. <laughs> um, I don't think I could sum it up any better than that. Thank you, Rue. So, Ollie's asked for any final bits of advice I can give and I'm sure people already have their methods of uh, being thrifty and saving money as a student. Uh, after all, you're not applying to Warwick from, straight from school. Um, I've found uh, that half the time I don't remember to make myself lunch. Um, I can barely remember to do my daughter's packed lunch. Um, but instant noodles have been a bit of a saviour. You can take a Tupperware in. Um, we have common rooms at the hospitals, so you can you can make your own lunch there for super cheap. Um, and, and it's also quite a nice space to relax uh, knowing that it's just medical students around because you do have to be quite mindful if you take lunch in um, one of the cafes on, on the hospital grounds just because obviously you're surrounded by patients and their families. Um, but yeah, remember to unwind in your lunch breaks. Don't just sit there doing Anki. Have noodles, have fun. <laughs>